Okay, if you have not already, go ahead and set up a new project, file, project window. And I'm going to call this UV Demo. So I hit the new button. UV Demo. I will save it to my desktop here, desktop, and I will hit select. Okay, and then accept. All right, so I'm going to first start off by showing you how to create an image plane to use as a template for your model. So if I go out here and zoom back out to the front view, make that my dominant view here, I click on this little icon here, which is the icon called image plane. It's the fourth one over here. And it looks here into my source images folder which is in my projects folder. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump back out here to the finder. Uh, I'm going to pick these two um, images that I want to use and I'm going to put them into my UV demo source images folder. So I grab them here, hold them over here, and I'm going to move these into source images. Okay. Now when I go back and click on the image plane, uh, it looks in my source images. I, I'm going to choose Cascade Door Entrance here, which is my photo, and I'm going to open it up, and it brings in the photo on what's called an image plane. Now, if I look at this, it's obviously sideways here, and usually I would go into Photoshop and just turn it around so it, it fits, but just to show you what you can do with an image plane, you can see here in the perspective view <clears throat> that the image is mapped onto a two-dimensional plane. So I can move this in three-dimensional space, and <clears throat> I'm probably more interested right now in rotating it, so I'm going to hit Rotate here, uh, or E, and I'm going to hold down the J key, and that's going to constrain me to 15-degree uh, increments, and I'm going to rotate this around until it's at 90 degrees. And I'm going to look at it over here, and I could also move this up in this view so the, I don't know, the door is kind of at roughly Y0 here. You don't have to, just another little detail. And you can also move this back and forth. Now it's uh, you can see how if I move it behind the grid, the grid shows up on top. And then if I move it in front of the grid, sometimes you want to do that. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to go over here, and I'm going to actually turn my grid off using show grid and uncheck the grid box. And now I have an image plane that's ready to go. Once I have my image plane set up, I'm ready to model on top of this. Now, not going to be a whole lot of modeling here. I'm going to use my simple polygon cube, and I'm going to click and drag so that it roughly fills that space there and I have to drag a height or a depth for this so I'm just going to kind of guesstimate it there and now I'm going to pop back out to the perspective view and here's another little trip trick if you hold down control option and then click and drag around something it will zoom you in on that and hit six for the shaded view and this door is actually a little bit thick so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to right click on the object, I'm going to choose face mode, click on the front face, and I'm just going to move it back using my W key till it's a little bit more door-like in its thickness there. Okay, I'm going to zoom back out to the front view, and I'm going to double check, control option, and drag a marquee to zoom in. And I'm going to make a few more adjustments here. This time I'm going to click on um, Vertex. I'm going to grab these verts over here and move them, pinch them in a little bit so we're lining up with the door. And I'm not going to get too uptight about this. We're very close here. I'm just going to leave it at that. Okay, I'm going to go back to Object Mode. And I'm going to select my object. I'll hit 6 here to give me a shaded view, and then I'm going to hit X-Ray here uh, so that I can see through this object but still have a sense of it being solid. And then I'm going to go up here to Edit, Delete by Type, History with my 
box selected and it will get rid of all of these little moves that I made so that it simplifies it and that just will get in the habit of deleting our history as we go. We'll talk more about that later. Uh, and just to kind of make things a little bit neater, I'm going to go up here to Window Outliner and open up my Outliner in a separate window. And I'm going to change the name of this from PCube 1 to Cascade Door. Okay. Now I'm going to uh, introduce you to a new window. It's right here. It's the UV Texture Editor. And I'm going to click this to open it. And you're going to see that with my door selected, I see a six-sided or a six squares uh, stacked together like this. And I won't go into this too much now, but these are what we call the UV coordinates of this object. And UV coordinates are simply a set of 2D coordinates that correspond to a 3D object. So this is a two-dimensional space here, and it corresponds to our three-dimensional object. Now, it doesn't correspond very well because this is these are all squares. And what we're going to want is um, a set of corresponding rectangles that are proportional to uh, our actual door object. So we should have thin ones for the sides and big rectangular tall ones for the front and the back. And we're going to do that very quickly here by going to make sure that we're in our polygon menu and then go over here to create UVs automatic mapping. And sure enough we now have um, two big rectangles that correspond to the front and the back and we have uh, two long skinny ones that correspond to the sides of our door and two shorter skinny ones that correspond to the top and bottom of our door. Okay, so my first question is which one of these rectangles is the front of the door and which one is the back? Well, I can find this out a couple different ways. I can go over here and I can go into face mode. I can select the front face and it shows me that, oh, this one here on the left is indeed my front rectangle. So the next thing I want to find out is which one of which uh, is the top and which is the bottom of this rectangle. So I'm going to switch it over to from my UV texture editor. I can right click on this and choose UV. And UV will allow me to select the points here which correspond to the vertices out here. So as I click and drag around the top UVs here it shows me that indeed those correspond to the top of uh, my door and that's correspond to these two points here. Now just as an advance heads up I'm going to go ahead and check this is the back of my door. If I grab the UVs here and I check where they are out in 3D space, ah they're at the bottom of the door and I'm going to temporarily turn off my image plane here. I'm going to go show image planes turn that off and as I go around the back you can see those UVs here are on the bottom so that's just giving me a heads up that when I go to make a texture in Photoshop uh, I'll have to flip this image here in order to get it to, dis to display it properly okay so now I have this is called what we would call a UV set our UV sets are contained within this square here and UV sets are always placed with, within a square and so all of the textures that we'll be generating will always be on a square. Now that I'm ready with my UVs I'm going to export them as a PNG file to open in Photoshop. Uh, I'll go out here and change this to object mode. Uh, when I deselect that you'll notice that the UVs disappear. No problem. Select the object again and here we go. Now I go up to polygons and at the very bottom UV snapshot. Now here uh, I'll export it. It's going to export it by default to my images folder. That's cool. And I can give it a custom name instead of out UV. I'll call it door out UV. And then I will say save. And then I'll make sure I'm in PNG here. 
and leave this black. Make sure your image size is decent, so 1024 by 1024 is great. You can just type those in. Keep aspect ratio will be a good thing to check to make sure those are the same. And then we hit OK. Now I'm going to switch over to Photoshop, <clears throat> and I'm going to open up my um, UVs from my Images folder. So open, desktop, uh, UV demo, images, door out UV, open. I have now a PNG image, which is nicely transparent of my UV set. Now I'm going to open up uh, my image that I'm going to use for the basis of my texture map. So I go up here to File, Open, and I've already put that those door pictures uh, at the very beginning in my Source Images folder. So I'm going to open up that. This Cascade door is here, and I open that up. And here's my close-up picture of the doors that I want to create. So we're just modeling one of these doors. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to use my marquee tool and I'm going to just go out here and grab a piece of that. So command C for copy and command V for paste. And you can see this door is much, much bigger than the UV map. No problem. I'm going to zoom out here, command minus and F to go full screen here and command T for translate or free form free transform sorry not translate and I'm just gonna keep transforming this scaling it until it's pretty close to being ready to fit I'm gonna go ahead and drag it underneath our UV set I'm gonna rename this to UV so I know what that's doing there and I'm gonna zoom in and there we go. All right, uh, Command T, whoops, wrong layer. Command T. All right, and this is my front over here, so I'm gonna just drag this over here so it lines up with the front. All right, so you'll notice that the panels on this door are not horizontal, they're at an angle because there's some perspective distortion and that's pretty normal um, in a photograph that you take by hand. That's not really carefully set up. So I'm going to use um, Distort, which is under Edit, Transform, Distort. And that's going to allow me to tweak each side of this. And I'm going to just get this so that those lines are a little bit more parallel. So I'm going to distort it again. Edit, Transform, Distort. And I'm just going to pull this side out so that that corresponds a little bit better and hit return. Okay, I'm just going to trim this down a little bit. I don't need to get too exact, but I just want to get it, make it a little bit easier to see here. So I'm going to just trim this down and do that. I'm going to uh, copy this uh, layer by holding down Option and then just dragging it over here so that it's going to be the back of my door. And I'm going to go ahead and flip this because I know that the UVs are upside down. Edit, Transform, Flip Vertical. So that'll correspond. But I want to fill in the side and bottom UVs here. And I'm going to do this kind of down and dirty trick. I'll just go and make a copy of this side of the door here. Don't really want those hinges in there, so I'll see if I can avoid them. And then I'm going to paste it and drag that pasted version over here to cover these UVs. I'm going to pull this up over the top so I can see it better. And this is the down and dirty part. I'm just going to scale this to fit. Ooh, bad man. All right, there we go. Go out here and then down like this. And I think I can just about get away with that. Return. And then option drag that over here for my bottom. I'll turn off the UVs here. And then I will export this as 
an image to be used in the material editor. So file, save as, and before I do anything, I'm going to save this into source images as my door texture. I'm going to save this as a PSD. Now you can use PSDs in Maya directly, but they can be a little bit persnickety. So just to make things simple, I'll go ahead and save that because you always want to save your layered files always, always, always so that you can go back and edit them. But I'm also going to save a flat version of this, save as a Targa or a TGA. So door texture, uh, TGA Targa. Okay, save it. 24 bits per pixel is good and hit OK. Now we're going to jump back to, you guessed it, Maya. And what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and close the texture editor for right now. And I'm going to make a new material. Well, I can do that up here. Window, render, rendering editors, hypershade. Open up the hypershade. And I can just make a new material here. I'm going to go, I'll use a blend material. Go ahead and close this. Uh, it shows up here in my attribute editor. You might have the channel box open, so make sure you click on the attribute editor tab. Let's go to the color channel here, and we're going to click on the little checker box next to this. And this is the symbol for that we're going to connect something into this color box. Now, if you wanted to just make a plain colored material, you can go here, of course, and using the color wheel, you can pick out a nice new nifty color, red, orange, green, whatever. Uh, and say OK, but we're, we're, we want to use our texture as the color map. So I'm going to go over here, click on the checkerboard, and choose File here. for, And then in, we're going to choose our Targa file that we just saved. So we click on the folder here, and we're going to choose our uh, door texture TGA. And we hit Open and it shows up here in the sample window. Hypershade again. Window, rendering, rendering editors, hypershade. And we can see it here, blend one. So if I click on this, it brings it back up over here. I'll call this uh, door material. Okay. Now in the hypershade, uh, I've got this open. I can go out here, click on my door to select it. And then I can right click on the door material and say assign material to selection. And there we go. Close that. Here's our door. And it's right side up on both sides. And control option, I can drag a marquee. There it is. I'm entering a wellness hall. Good for me. Uh, and I can zoom back out and see that that's looking pretty good.